talked about solutions to linear systems. Let's look at solving them. For solving linear systems, there's going to be three basic steps that we need to go through. Step one, we want to start with an augmented matrix. We have a linear system, we need to move it to augmented matrix form. The second step, we then use our row operations to get our matrix in reduced row echelon form. And then the third step, we move back to a system of equations. So steps one and three are definitely the easiest two steps here. And we've talked about how to move to augmented matrices as well as how to get a system of equations from an augmented matrix. However, we haven't discussed step two, actually using these row operations to move to reduced row echelon form. So before I talk about how to do that, let's look at why we might want to do this sequence of steps. Here are two augmented matrices, and I'm going to go ahead and let you know that these are row equivalent. We used a sequence of row operations to get from one to the other. And I want to translate each one of these into a system of equations. So we know that each column corresponds to a variable. So I'm going to let the first one be x1, x2, and x3. So this first equation says x1 plus 7x2 minus 4x3 equal to negative 6. The second equation then says 2x1 plus 5x2 minus 3x3 equal to negative 11. And then the last one, negative x1 plus x2 plus 4x3 equal to 14. So now I have a system of linear equations, but I have no idea anything about its solution just from looking at these. So let's work on the second matrix. This one says 1x1, 0x2, 0x3 equal to negative 5. So we just had x1 equal to negative 5. The second row had 0x1 plus 1x2 plus 0x3 equal to 1, or just x2 equal to 1. And then the final one, 0x1 plus 0x3 plus 1x, 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 equal to 2, which just gives us x3 equal to 2. So this is definitely a much, much simpler form, and now I can pull out this solution. So this is our ultimate goal and why we might want to do this, moving from augmented matrix matrices to reduced row echelon form, like this matrix on the right, will let us easily get our solutions. So how do we go about doing that? We're going to use something called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So let's talk about how this works. The first step is to make the first entry in the first non-zero column a 1. And we can do this using the interchange operation or the scaling operation. But the idea is if the first column is zero, we're going to ignore it. We're going to find the first column that's not all zeros and make the very, very first entry a one. The second step, we want to get zeros in all the other entries of this column. And for this, we're going to use the replacement operation. So we'll have to use replacement operations to get zeros all below this one. We'll then move to the next row and we'll get a leading one. So we want our leading entry, our pivot, to still be a one for reduced row echelon form. And then we get zeros in all the other entries of this column. And then we just repeat this process. We move to the next row and get the leading one and get all the other zeros. Move to the next row, get its leading one and all of the other zeros, etc. So let's look at examples of solving these kind of systems. Here's our first system. Negative x1 plus 4x2 plus 5x3 equal to 1. Negative 3x1 plus 9x2 plus 9x3 equal to negative 6 and x1 minus 5x2 minus 6x3 equal to 0. So step one is to put this in augmented matrix form. So here's my augmented matrix. The first step in our algorithm is to get the first entry in the first non-zero column of 1. So we want to turn this entry right here into a 1. And there are two ways we can do that. 
We could switch the first and the third rows, or we could multiply the first row by negative one. And I'm gonna do that second option. I'm gonna multiply the first row by negative one. I'll abbreviate this by saying negative R1 to indicate that I'm gonna change the sign of the first row. The second and third rows will not change, so I'm gonna leave them the way they are, and then we're just gonna change the sign of the first row. So I end up with one, negative four, negative five, negative one. The next thing I need to do is to get zeros below this. So I'm gonna start with turning the negative three into a zero. In order to do this, we're gonna use replacement operations. So in order to turn a negative three into a zero, we need to add three. So I'm gonna multiply the first row by three and add it to the second row. And I abbreviate this by saying three row one plus row two. The first row here won't change, but the second row will. So I'm gonna multiply the first row by three and then add it to the second row. So for my first entry, I had three times one is three, minus three is zero. For the second entry, I have three times negative four is negative 12, plus nine is negative three. The next entry, three times negative five is negative 15, plus nine is negative six. And then finally, negative one times three is negative three, minus six is negative three. So I was able to get the zero, one zero below the one, and now I need to get the next one a zero. It's currently a one, and I need to make it a zero, so I need to subtract one. So I'm actually gonna subtract the first and third rows. And I'm gonna abbreviate this by this negative R1 plus R3. So we would have, for the first entry, negative one plus one is zero. We would then have negative negative four, so four minus five is negative one. Negative negative five is five, minus six is negative one. And then finally, negative negative one is one, plus zero is one. So now my first column looks exactly the way we want it to. And we move to my second column. We need to now move down to the second row and get our pivot here in this negative three spot. And I'm gonna do that by multiplying the second row by negative one third. So I'll do negative one third row two. When we do this, my first and third rows don't change. They stay exactly the same. And then for the second row, I just multiply everything by negative one third. That gives me a zero, a one, a two, and a one. Next, I need to get zeros in that row. So let's start with getting, a, uh, I need to get zeros in that column. Let's start with getting a zero above that one in the negative four spot. And I'll do that by doing four row two plus row one. Since I need to add four, four times one is four, minus four would be zero in that second spot in the first row. So for this one, my second row is not gonna change. For the first row, the first entry, I would have four times zero is zero, plus one is one. We have four times one is four, minus four is zero. Four times two is eight, minus five is three. And then finally, four times one is four, minus one is three. Now that we have that, we can start looking at our third row. Below the one in the second column is a negative one, so I can get rid of that by just adding the second and third rows. So I'll denote that by R2 plus R3. The first entries are just zero and zero, so that adds to zero. Next we have, negative, we have one minus one, which is zero. We then have two minus one, which is one. And finally, one plus one is two. I now have my pivot in my first column and my second column, and now it's time to work on the third column. And we can see that's already a one, so we don't have to do that step, and instead we just need to get zeros in the rest of the column. So we'll start with the first row, which currently has a three, so I need to subtract three. Negative three, row three, plus row one. And when we do that, the third row doesn't change. So negative three times zero plus one is one. 
Negative 3 times 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. For the second row, it currently has a 2, so I need to subtract 2. So I'm going to do negative 2 row 3 plus row 2. For the first entry, I would just have 0 plus 0. The second entry would be 0 plus 1. The third entry, negative 2 plus 2. And then our very last one, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. So with all of that, I have my solution. Negative 3, negative 3, 2. For our next example, here's my system of equations. And step one should be moving this to an augmented matrix. Here's my augmented matrix. We need to start by getting a one in the first row, first column. And we already have that. So let's get zeros below it. For the second row, it currently has a two. So we need to subtract two. So we have negative two row one plus row two. We know the first row won't change here. So we have negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 plus 0 is 2. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10 minus 4 is 6. And then negative 2 times negative 13 is 26 minus 8 is 18. The next thing we need is a zero in the first column in the third row. It's currently a negative one, so I can just add rows one and three. One minus one is zero. Negative one minus one is negative two. Negative five plus one is negative four. And then finally, negative 13 plus three is negative 10. Now that the first column looks the way it we need it, we need to start working on the second column. So I need to get the second row, second column to a one. And I'll do this by multiplying the second row by one half. For this, we know the first and third row are not changing, and we just need to divide the second row by two. And that gives us zero, one, three, and nine. The next step is to get zeros both above and below this one. The first row currently is a negative one in that spot, so I can just add the first and second rows. I know the second row is not changing when I do this. For the first row, I would have zero plus one is one. One minus one is zero. Three minus five is negative two. And nine minus 13 is negative four. For the third row, I currently have a two in the second column, so I need to add two. So I'll do 2 row 2 plus row 3. So I would have 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 4 is 2. And then 2 times 9 is 18, minus 10 is 8. So now I have my second column the way it needs to be. The next step is to get a 1 in this spot right here, third row, third column. And I can get that by multiplying by one half. The first row and second row don't change. We just need to divide the second, the third row by two. That gives us zero, zero, one, and four. Finally, we need to work on getting zeros above that one. The first row has a negative two in that spot, so I need to add two. So we have two row three plus row one. We know the third row here isn't changing. So we two, do two row three plus row one. So zero times two is zero plus one is one. Two times zero is zero plus zero is zero. Two times one is two minus two is zero. And then four times two is eight minus four is four. We then need to work on the second row. It currently has a three, so I need to subtract three. So I'll do negative three row three plus row two. Negative three times zero plus zero is zero. 
Negative 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And then finally, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. And now I have my solution. 4, negative 3, 4. 